Welcome to another episode of Med Tutorials. Viruses are one of the most important causes of infectious diseases in humans. There are very few disciplines of medicine that is not affected by them. In this tutorial, we will look at different ways of classifying pathogenic viruses. And at the end of the tutorial, you will have an overview of the different pathogenic viruses. Now a virus is a microorganism that needs a host to replicate in. It contains just some genetic material, either DNA or RNA, that's known as the viral genome, with a protein shell that is known as capsid. Together, this structure is known as the nucleocapsid. For many viruses, this constitutes their entire structure. But for some viruses, they have an extra phospholipid covering, which is known as the envelope. The envelope is studded with glycoproteins that aid in the attachment of the viruses to the host cells. Now that we have seen the structure of a virus, we can move on to its classification. Unfortunately, the classification of viruses is complicated. This is because you can classify them differently on multiple parameters. Based on the presence of the envelope, you can classify them as naked or enveloped. Based on the nucleocapsid structure symmetry, you have two major groups, icosahedral and the helical. You can go deeper, you can classify them based on the segmentation of the nucleoside as non-segmented and segmented. To fit the large number of viruses with their families within these parameters for classification purposes can be challenging. To understand the next important classification, we need to have a basic understanding of viral replication. So the virus needs a host cell to replicate. Once the genome, viral genome makes its way into the host cell, it starts to replicate. But it is not enough that the viral genome replicates. The virus also needs synthesis of viral proteins as well. For this to happen, the viral genetic material has to be transcribed into messenger RNA that can be read by the host ribosome. The host ribosome then reads the code for the synthesis of the viral protein in the messenger RNA, finally resulting in the synthesis of viral proteins. Now that we have new viral genome and viral protein, we get new virions that go on to infect other cells. So having understood that, we now come to the Baltimore classification. A classification system that was developed by David Baltimore, which classifies the virus based on their type of genome, that's either DNA or RNA, and the way that the virus replicates because not all DNA viruses replicate the same way and not all RNA viruses replicate the same way. So we have DNA viruses, RNA viruses and the reverse transcriptase viruses. Totally we will see that there are seven classes of virus. Class 1 is the double-stranded DNA viruses. Class 2 are the single-stranded DNA viruses. Then we come to the RNA viruses. Class 3 are the double-stranded RNA viruses. Class 4 are the single-stranded RNA viruses, positive sense. Class 5 are the single-stranded RNA viruses with negative sense. Then we come to the reverse transcriptase category. In class 6, we have the single-stranded reverse transcriptase RNA viruses. And in class 7 is the double-stranded reverse transcriptase DNA viruses. As we saw earlier, the viruses need the host ribosome to read their genetic code so that they can produce viral proteins. 
the DNA viruses and the double-stranded RNA viruses through different mechanisms ensure that messenger RNA has that viral genetic code that is synthesized and, be, and can be read by the host ribosomes to initiate viral protein synthesis. Now class 4 viruses are single-stranded RNA viruses with a positive sense. What do we mean by positive sense? This means that the viral RNA can be directly read by the host ribosomes to initiate synthesis of viral proteins. There is no need to go through the additional step of going through a messenger RNA. Now class 5 RNA viruses are single-stranded RNA viruses like a messenger RNA but they have a negative sense. That means that these viral RNAs cannot be directly read by the host ribosomes. They need to undergo a further step before they can be read. Polymerase enzyme is required to make positive sense RNA copies that can be read by the host ribosomes. Next we come to class 6 and class 7 which are known as the reverse transcriptase viruses. Class 6 is a single stranded RNA while class 7 is a double stranded DNA virus. With the help of reverse transcriptase and integrase enzymes, they integrate viral genetic material into the host DNA in the host nucleus. Now this corrupted host DNA then encodes for messenger RNA with viral code that is read by the ribosomes to initiate synthesis of viral proteins. Now that we have seen all the seven classes of the viruses, we are going to look at each of these seven classes. First we look at the DNA viruses that are in class 1 and class 2. All the enveloped virus families are represented with curly brackets. Class 1 is double-stranded DNA viruses. The first family is Papilloma viridae family which has the human papilloma virus known for causing genital warts and various cancers especially cervical cancer. Then we have the polyoma viridae family which has the JC virus causing encephalitis and the BK virus that affects transplant patients. Then we have the adenovirus family and the herpes family of viruses. There are eight important herpes viruses that are pathogenic to humans that I have listed here. Finally, we have the pox family of viruses. If you remember the now extinct smallpox virus is from this family, but we also have the variola virus and the molluscum contagiosum virus that causes the characteristic skin lesions. In class two, that is the single-stranded DNA viruses, we have the parvoviridae family. The most well-known being the parvovirus B19 virus, which can cause fever and the characteristic slap cheek syndrome. Now we move on to class 3 to 5, which are the RNA viruses. Class 3 is the double stranded RNA viruses. The family that is pathogenic in humans are the Rioviridae family. Under this family, we have the rotavirus that causes diarrheal diseases in children. We also have the Rio virus and the Colorado tick fever virus. Class 4 is a big group of important pathogenic viruses. First, we have the Picorna viridae family. Under this, we have the polio virus, Coxsackie virus, enterovirus, rhinovirus, and hepatitis A virus. You notice that in the same family we have viruses that cause illnesses in different systems of the body. Polio, the nervous system, Coxsackie, the skin, enterovirus, the skin, the GIT, the CNS, rhinovirus, the respiratory system and the GI system, hepatitis A that affects the liver. So what we see is that the virus family does not define the illness that the species of the virus under it can cause. The second family is the Calciviridae family. We have the Norvac virus, which is common cause for viral diarrhea in the West. We have Hepatitis E, the 
third family we see is the Astroviridae family which contains the Astrovirus which is a cause of diarrhea in children and the elderly. Then we have the Toga Viridae family which has the Rubella virus which is also known as German measles. Significant in pregnancy as it is teratogenic and can cause severe fetal malformations. Chikungunya seen commonly in third world countries. It's also present in India. It's a cause for fever and arthritis. The arthritis can become chronic in nature. Eastern and Western equine encephalitis viruses responsible for encephalitis. Next, we have the flavivirus family, which is an important pathogenic group of viruses. Under this, we have the dengue virus, which is currently endemic in many parts of the world. Yellow fever virus, which is seen in sub-Saharan Africa and South America. The Zika virus, which can be teratogenic in pregnancy and cause microcephaly in the fetus. Japanese encephalitis and West Nile encephalitis can cause seasonal endemic encephalitis in many nations, third world nations especially. Kyasanur forest disease localized to Karnataka in India. Hepatitis C and Hepatitis G of course which affect the liver. Last but not the least we have the coronaviruses. Now they became famous with SARS that is a severe acute respiratory syndrome virus which started in Southeast Asia. And then we had Middle East Respiratory Syndrome virus. Of course, now we have SARS-CoV-2, which is responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic. Coming to class five, we first have the Arena Viridae family. Under this, we have the Lassa fever that is seen in West Africa, causes deafness, hemorrhagic manifestations, and encephalitis. We have the South American hemorrhagic fevers the lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus which causes aseptic meningitis and can also lead to meningoencephalitis. Second is the Bunya viridae family. Here we have the hunter virus genus that have different species of viruses that can cause different syndromes. We have the hunter virus pulmonary syndrome and the hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome that is seen with this virus. The other viruses are the California encephalitis and sandfly fever virus. Third, we have the paramyxoviridae family. Here we have the parainfluenza virus that can cause respiratory illness. Mumps that's characterized by fever and parotitis. Measles that's characterized by fever, rash, coplic spots, rhinitis, conjunctivitis and pneumonia. The Nipah virus first detected in Nipah in Malaysia and we have had recent outbreaks in India and Bangladesh. They can cause respiratory illness and encephalitis and with high mortality rates up to 30%. And also the respiratory syncytial virus. The fourth family is the orthomyxoviridae. Now this is the family, the influenza family of viruses that also include the avian and the swine flu virus. We have the Phalloviridae family, which has the highly dangerous viruses, the Marburg and the Ebola viruses, both which causes hemorrhagic fevers with high mortality rates. Finally, we come to the Rhabdoviridae family. The most well known is the rabies virus that spread through saliva, bites, and scratches of infected animals like dogs, cats, raccoons, etc., causes CNS involvement, hydrophobia, and once someone is symptomatic with central nervous sim uh, system symptoms it is a hundred percent mortality usually we also have the vesicular somatitis virus which commonly affects cattle but can cause influenza like illnesses in humans now there's a mnemonic that will help us remember the six uh, uh, families in the single-stranded RNA negative sends uh, class 5 that it's always bring polymerase or fail replication so you can use that to remember and differentiate uh, the six families from the negative sense from the positive sense single-stranded RNA viruses the last group we are going to consider is the reverse transcriptase viruses 
Class 6 is the single-stranded RNA reverse transcriptase viruses. We have the retroviridae family of viruses. The most famous member is of course HIV-1 and 2 viruses which is responsible for AIDS. We also have the human T lymphotropic virus or also known as the T cell leukemia virus. There are four species of this virus and they spread through blood transfusion and through IV drug use. They can cause acute and chronic leukemias and lymphomas. Type 1 may also cause a demyelinating disease that is called tropical spastic paraparesis. So of the four types, uh, type 1 is the most severe. The last class, last, uh, class 7, is the double-stranded reverse transcriptase virus. The family under this is the Hepidna viridae family. And the virus that is pathogenic to humans in this family is the hepatitis B virus, which is capable of chronic, causing chronic hepatitis and hepatocellular carcinoma. So there you have it. The seven classes under the Baltimore classification and under it we can get all the pathogenic uh, viruses. Class 1, which we saw Papilloma viridae, Polyoma viridae, Adeno viridae families, the Herpes viridae family and the Pox viridae family. So in this group the Herpes viridae is a very important group pathogenic to humans, commonly pathogenic to humans. In um, class 2 we just have parvovirus B19 which is significant. Class 3 rotavirus which commonly involves children. Class 4 and 5 we have a lot of uh, important pathogenic viruses in this group and uh, class 4 is positive sense, class 6 is negative sense. But there's a lot of pathogenic viruses in this group. Class 6 is we remember HIV the most famous uh, species in this group and class 7 hepatitis B. So hope through, through this you were able to get uh, uh, an overview of viruses and uh, in the next session we're going to classify the viruses based on the syndromes they cause uh, that is GI symptoms or is it uh, neuro symptoms and we're going to classify viruses uh, based on that. And, and as you saw in this session, a virus which causes neurological symptoms can be scattered over all the seven classes. Viruses that causes hepatitis can uh, are not restricted to one family and they can be all over the place. So in the next session, we will be doing a clinical assessment of these viruses and classify them based on the illness they cause. So till then, bye-bye.